What's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody out there? Today, before we get started, we're going to have a little word from our sponsors. day job or side hustle may be, there's no excuse for not being ready to put in some work. All right. Now that we got that very important message out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get into it. And today, I want to talk to y'all about how do we prevent these white supremacist attacks that are happening throughout history to the present day all over the nation, you know what I mean? step-by-step step, concise answer to that question it's right here on this very video and by now it's my loyal subscribers y'all already know how i do it i always reach and look to you know other men in this society in this spirit dead or alive that bring this message to life so right now, right here, I bring to you my brother, Professor Black Truth, on how do we stop these white supremacist attacks that's going on today. Walk with me on this one. Evil doesn't go away all on its lonesome. It has to be made to do so. It has to be driven out. It must be forced from every arena. Hold up. Let me back it up a little bit. And turn the volume up a little bit. Evil away all on its lonesome. It has to be made to do so. It has to be driven out. It must be forced from every arena. It must be found wherever it's cowering at and forced to flee. And we have to be the ones driving them out. We must seize the lepers of power for ourselves. We can and should have disproportionate influence. And we can if we make that our focus. Now when it comes time for the... One way we can seize the lepers of power that my brother is talking about right here is through local elections by controlling who is the sheriff, who is the DA, etc. at the local level. Carry on. Kind of conversation a lot of black folks love to put on the defeatist talk and the reason why is they think that that absolves them of having to do anything. They pretend as if, uh, well, uh, all these other black folks, who knows they wouldn't go for nothing like that. They would, what they're really saying is they don't want to do anything, so they're trying to blame some anonymous, unseen thing. As I mean, you got a lot of that going around now, especially on YouTube. You know what I mean? You got a lot of these lukewarm people that comes out with the message that they present and describe as black empowerment, but it's pure weak sauce. They tell you half the story and they always absolve the white supremacists of the blame. You know what I mean? These these black people this, black people that channels. Black people need to stop this. Black people need to stop that. But they never start from the beginning and how the conditions were created and still are being created by the white supremacists. You gotta start there. And then you can get into your into your little anti-black Republican spiel. People like 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 that weak sauce that Kwame Brown talked about over there, people like that and, and several others. But proceed. Is to cover up for their own cowardice, their own apathy, their own unwillingness to mix it up with the white supremacists and actually put in the work that power demands. That's why I have no pick. That's what they scared of. Point blank. Period. 
Well, you know, it's, it's really these other black folks know the problem is you. The problem is that you want to make excuses for not fighting white supremacy. That is, until some good old boys get in their pickup truck with some shotguns and decide they're going to chase you down. Then all of a sudden, somebody needs to do something. What's the solution for... That's the only time those type of people admit racism when the boot is on their neck. Racist clerk of court who constantly makes sure that they're not calling any black folks for jury duty to have a black empowerment clerk of court. That's right. What is the solution for a racist judge, or at least a judge highly sympathetic to the white supremacists who lets them get away with stacking the jury and lets them do whatever the hell they want? The solution is a black empowerment judge. That's right. What's the solution for a racist judge like that Judge Schroeder in Kenosha, Judge Olu Stevens in Louisville? That's the solution. The solution is getting those. Shout out to Judge Olu Stevenson from Louisville, Kentucky. Those who don't know who that is, right? He was the judge in the Breonna Taylor case. He was the judge that dropped the charges against her boyfriend for shooting back at the police. He is the judge that stood up to the white supremacist power structure and allowed a black man to get justice. Shout out to him. White supremacists out of those DA's offices and out of those sheriff's offices and off of those judicial benches and getting our people in them. And depending on the demographics of your city council or your county, it makes all the sense in the world to use the ballot box. Voting works if black empowerment is on the ballot and you can have the most impact at the local level. Federal is right. Voting works at the local level if, keyword, if black empowerment is on the ballot. I don't see it on the ballot. I see lukewarm half measure and I see self-serving black people that's looking for a comfortable position under white supremacy and have no interest in seeing the whole system fall. But here's what you do. Listen to my brother. One of the leading voices in black empowerment today. This brother, Professor Black Truth, should have more visibility than 90% of the people that you got out there. But he's un uncompromised and he comes straight down the middle. If you like weak sauce, you won't like him. Elections, not so much. Voting can work, but only if you've already got somebody who's on there, or if you don't see black power on the ballot, you be the one to put it on the ballot. Because we're not going to protect ourselves from the next white supremacist ambush, or make sure that we punish the next white supremacist ambush, unless we're the ones in charge. Okay. We're not going to win this fight by being reactive. After last year's insurrection, you now have a number of the very terrorists who took part in the coup attempt mm. now running for public office. And they're using the fact that they tried to overthrow the government as their calling card. They're playing that as one of their qualifications. I should be in the government because I tried to overthrow the government. Now vote for me. This is absolutely crazy to me. I'm going to back that up. Some of the very people that participated in storming the Capitol are now running for office. And they're using the fact that they tried to overthrow the government as their calling card. They're playing that as one of their qualifications. I should be in the government because I tried to overthrow the government. Ridiculous. For me. Putting aside how ridiculous it is that somebody expects to be able to have people respect them being in public office when they didn't respect the other people who are, putting that aside, it just goes to show, even very people who have no business running for office, these guys are absolutely shameless about it. That's because they're serious about making sure they remain in charge. And that's the point. They don't give a fuck. They serious about their power. And their power is directly tied to the disenfr disenfranchisement of black people in this country. They're serious about making sure they try to occupy as many of the levers of administrative power as they possibly can. The time to be dealing with the next McMichaels family and their little inbred accomplice, it's not after they murder the next Ahmad Arbery, by then it's too late. The time to deal with these scumbags before they kill. No more of these instances where we're sitting here wondering whether or not the law is actually going to be enforced. No more of this wondering whether or not they're going to let yet another all-white jury be impaneled. Whether or not another judge.
judge is going to be giving a wink and a nod to everything the defense does. Because if there's anything that we should have learned from the murder of Ahmad Arbery, it's that justice is too important to be left up to chance. Good day. Just like always, this is your host to the next post. Your boy blessed the best. Next time Cletus and Enos and the boys decide that they're going to be stalking some black person, making sure that we are safe from these white supremacist attacks. And that brings us to the sponsor of today's moment of truth, Power Tools. There's no telling when something's going to come up, so make sure you carry your power tools at all times. You never know when you're going to need to bring the hammer down, or when you'll have some trash that needs to be blown away, or some obstacle that requires cutting down. Don't get caught empty-handed. Keep your hammer close by. Keep that leaf blower at the ready. And always carry your steel. Power tools. Because no matter what your day job or side hustle may be, there's no excuse for not being ready to put in some work. White supremacy is pure evil. The worst evil the world has ever known.